Hey there, it's Matt Walsh from Academy Home Buyers and EXP in Virginia Beach. And we're coming at you today with a quick state of the market and two tips for selling your home in the current market. All right, so you're reading the news. Everybody knows that we are in a recession. If not, we are going into a recession. Can't avoid it. It's what's going to happen. What does that have to do with the housing market? And when we talk about interest rates, what is that having, you know, what kind of effect is that having on the on the um, housing market? And let's talk about that right now. Okay, let's take a look. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the southeastern Virginia region. This is where I live and work now. It is similar to the rest of the country, but there's always going to be some places that are, you know, more or less. But what we're looking at for southeastern Virginia is, let's take a look here, the number of active listings. This is, if you were to come down to Virginia Beach, in the southeastern Virginia area in the month of July, you would have had about 4,800 active listings to choose from if you were buying a house. As we see, um, this has steadily been increasing. This is good. This is good news. This is good news. Is this great news? No. Why? Because go back a couple of seasons to when we had a normalized market, 2017, 2018, this number wasn't 5,000. It was closer to 10,000. Okay, so we are still severely short on uh, inventory for people to buy. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, we're going um, to talk about new listings. What's the difference between new listings and active listings? New listings are just, as, they, as it says, something that hits the market and it's new. An active listing is a listing that's still active. It could have been new last month, but it's still active next month. So there's a difference between something that's new and still active. So let, let's track what we're going about. Let's go back to January. Again, this is 2022. So in January, we got about 2,500 new listings, right? But in January, there were about 3,500 active listings. That means that there were a holdover of about 1,000 listings from the previous month that didn't sell in December. So let's go on to February. February, we got maybe 2,900 new listings. In February, we had about 3,300 active listings. All right, that means there was less holdover. March, we're talking about maybe 3,700 new listings. In March, oh, about 3,500 active listings. Okay, that's telling us that everything that came on the market in March was swallowed up immediately. Okay, go to April, nearly 4,000. In April, less under 4,000. Again, the new things that hit the market, that's what was active. Everything else was already eaten up by the market. Now let's go into May. All right, May, we had a little bit uh, a little bit of a downturn here, maybe 3,600. And, you know, again, a little bit over 4,000. Now June, we got over 4,000 new listings. This is huge because, again, we haven't seen these numbers in a long time. And look at June, we had more, okay? There were like 44, 4,500 active listings. That means that everything that came on the market wasn't absorbed. Let's go to July. All right, July, we added 3,500 new listings. We have almost 5,000, maybe 46, 47, 800 um, active listings in July. We're not really looking at August because the August numbers are always skewed when I run these reports because we're in the month and a lot of the closings happen at the end of the month. So what is this telling us though? This is telling us now that we're at a point where houses are not being absorbed immediately. So a house hits the market and it's not being sold on day one. Maybe it's being sold on day 10, 20 or 30, right? So we are seeing some slowdown in the market. But again, these numbers don't um, don't hold water to 2017, 2018, even 2019 when we had a more normalized market. Let's go back to 2018. Um, July saw a decrease in new listings, right? So I just showed you that a second ago. Um, in, uh, let's take a look here, July had a decrease in new listings. Is that something that we should worry about? Well, let's go back to 2018. July had a decrease in new listings too. July is sort of like the middle of the summer. All right, August, people are getting ready to go back to school. May and June, people are getting ready to sell their houses. July is sort of like this little low month. It's, uh, if you go back through a number of years, half of them have decreases in uh, homes available in July. I think it just is what it is and we can't read into it for this year. 
right? The average days to sell a home, again, in southeastern Virginia, is hovering around 20 days, right? We went back to January, February, March, there was some we some increases there. People were worried about it and it came right back down. Now, August, I tell you that we can't look at August numbers too much because we're in the month, but for the month so far, that number is up a bit from say 21 days to like 24 days. I'm curious to see what this um, really says when the month is over and all the closings happen, um, usually by the you know, next week at the end of the month and we get some real data. I think we're going to see uh, days on market, the average time to sell a house going up north of 25. I really do. Okay, but let's compare that to 2018. People are, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Let's compare it to 2018, our last real normal market. 80 days, 70. Okay, at no point in that year did we get below 60 days to sell a home, right? So do you get the picture that things are starting to normalize, right? So um, houses aren't being absorbed necessarily the minute they get on the market, but they're being absorbed in a couple of days. OK, uh, you know, it's taking 25 days to get a seller into contract. Yeah, but a normal market is closer to 60. OK, we are still so far away from that crash that everyone's talking about because of a number of things. Tightened lending standards, you know, decrease in uh, in home availability. There's just nothing to sell. All right. So we have good buyers. We have very few homes and rising interest rates. It pushes out some buyers but it also pushes out sellers, right? I'm not gonna sell my home that has a 3% interest rate and buy a new one at a 5% interest rate unless I absolutely have to. So for as many people that get pushed out of the market as buyers, the same number, if not more, get pushed out of the market as sellers and it still tightens supply, okay? The average sales price in 2022, the increase I should say, has been significant, right? We started off over here, around uh, like 325 and now we're over over 350 i think the number here was like 362 in august you know is, is looking like it's going to be very similar to that so sales prices are still going up why because supply and demand is still in play all right more people need houses than houses are available although that is starting to level off and i would say into next year and the year after that we are going to see a much more normal market with 40 50 60 days on market and a house selling with one or two offers, not 10, but we're not there yet. Okay, the average sales price in 2021 also saw a big increase. All right, we started off around 300,000, we finished off in the 325 to you know, 326, 327 range, and now we're into the 360 range. That can't continue, all right? That can't, that increase can't continue, but we're not, I don't think, especially here in Southeast Virginia, we're not going to see that crash, we're going to see that leveling off and slowed increase in prices. All right, let's look back 2017 to now, going back five years, there's a 50% increase in home values, all right? So why am I showing this? This is very important because that means that most people have some equity in their home. Matt, who cares, right? The housing prices are gonna crash, all right? What that means is that if you own a home that's say 400,000, and you have $100,000 in equity in the home simply because the house prices have gone up so much in the years. If you fall on hard times and you can't pay your mortgage, or if the whole housing market starts to come in and contract 10, 15, 20%, you can still sell your home on the open market. That is what separates us right now from 2006, 7, 8, 9, and 10, when most people had no equity in their homes and then housing prices contracted and they owed more than what they could ever sell the home for on the open market. And then we had foreclosures and a whole disaster, right? Now, the disaster is gonna be mitigated by the fact that there is so much equity in the homes that even if the home prices contract, which may happen in some areas, I don't think it's really going to happen in too many areas, right? Uh, or if you fall on hard times, you have that out of being able to sell your home. And that is most people right now. Okay. Tip one, all right, for selling your home, price your home reasonably. For the last two years, you could literally just throw a dart on a wall, pick a number and people would pay it. No inspection contingencies, no mortgage contingencies. They're just throwing it out there. That has stopped. 
Okay, if you overprice your home, it will sit on the market. It will be one of those that was new last month and is still active next month. Okay, when a house it, um, sits on the market too long, it becomes stale. People think there's something wrong with it and it will eventually sell for less money than it should have if it was priced properly. What do I mean um, by this? So I actually have a house for sale right now. It's a house that um, I own. I, I purchased from somebody and we're, we're selling it. Uh, we helped them out on a, on a fast cash purchase. They were in trouble and we purchased the house in two weeks. And now we're reselling it for a small profit. It's actually going to be a pretty small profit when all is said and done. But we have to, I'm fixing the roof. We have to fix some, um, some pipes under the uh, crawl space. We're throwing in a home warranty, right? These are things, now they're being expected because there are other homes to purchase, right? There's more opportunity for a buyer to buy something else. They're not being pigeonholed into buying your house, right? So price your home reasonably and it will sell. Tip number two, be prepared to negotiate, right? Go on are the days of selling your house as is. Like I was just saying, a few months ago, I could have sold this house with the leaky pipe in the basement with the uh, sheathing in the in the roof uh, broken, and I would have said, I'm not fixing anything, and 10 people would have bought it, right? Be prepared now to make repairs according to engineering inspections. Be prepared to negotiate if the appraisal falls short. I just sold a house about a month ago. It was a duplex listed for two, it was listed for 300,000. We got it under contract for 285,000, I believe. And then the appraisal came in short, all right, at 260,000. And we got it at 260,000. We negotiated it down to the appraisal price. Three or four months prior to that, that wouldn't have happened, okay? They would have said, all right, forget it. And we would go with the other 15 buyers. But the market has changed. You have to be able to change with it. Price your home appropriately. Be prepared to negotiate repairs and negotiate appraisals. Um, be prepared to get your home ready to sell. Clean it up. These are things that we didn't have to do for the last two years. And a lot of homeowners are still in this mindset of, well, you know, why should I? I have the house. Well, there are still more houses now. There are becoming more houses available for other people. And in order to sell your home, you have to do a little bit more than you did three, four, eight, 10, 12 months ago in order to sell your home, right? So those are my tips. Price it right and be prepared to negotiate and spend some money on repairs for engineering inspections, maybe um, home warranties, and be prepared in case the appraisal falls short because the appraisal is a legal document that tells you what the value of the house is right about now, and two years ago, people didn't care about it. They were just paying, you know, the, it appraised at 350, I'm still paying 400 and they were paying the gap. That's not happening anymore. The market is leveling off. It's not collapsing, but it is leveling off. All right, if you have any questions, give me a call, 757-755-5587. If you need to sell your house, if you're looking to buy a house down here in Virginia Beach, give me a call. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Have a great day.